Hey there, everyone. That sexy nerd is back again. And I'm sorry, guys. I almost missed that battle. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I can't believe I almost forgot about this. Like, because I, 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 once again, it seems to be a motif for this month. I have no idea who these characters are. I've never seen Monster X Hunter. I mean, a uh, Hunter X Hunter. Sorry. I don't know why I, I was about to say Monster Hunter. Um, I never even played that either, which I want to. I do. And, uh,. What is this magic girl, magical girl index? Man, enemies is getting weirder and weirder to name. What, what was the name of that last one with the? First of all, Lelouch of the Rebellion is also a weird name. I'm like, what? And uh, um, what's that one with the that we just did recently on uh, on CJ to Champ? I can't remember. The guy with the purple hair. Oh, Anos Voldegold's uh, weird name for an anime. I just remember it's weird. That's all I can say. But anyway, yeah, I have no idea what these characters are all about. I don't know if they're going to be using magic or fighting or this or that or whatever. Um, not much I can say, but if you want me to let me know more about this stuff, it seems to be a motif for these videos. Let me know in the comments below, please. I want to know more about these characters and see if I can actually watch their shows. I'm already thinking about playing Skyrim after last week's episode. I mean, uh, yeah, last episode. I mean, Bloodborne, I, again, I'm too scared to play it <laughs> because, I mean, I hear all these horror stories about how hard it is. But anyway, let's stop talking about it and let's just get into the video. And remember, please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content. And subscribe if you think I deserve it. And let's do this thing, y'all. Killua Zoldek, Hunter Hunter's prodigious lightning assassin. Mizuka Makoto, Academy City's Ace Electric Princess. Oh, so Question, both what is more terrifying than the all-powerful crackling might of lightning? Lightning in the hands of yeah. hacky, hyper-talented teenagers. Oh, the worst combination. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The Zoldicks, a vicious family of assassins known the world over. I don't know why that reminded me of uh, the one episode I saw with uh, Demon Slayer. I don't know why that reminded me of that, but it did. So infamous for their killing techniques, a single photo of any member sells for millions. Uh. You don't want to be the target of their next family outing. But like all families, there's bound to be a rebel. As was the case with the middle child, Killua. Killua. They seriously named him Kill? Hardcore. Not only that, um, I don't know why it just also sounds like Killawog. You gonna eat that? Go for it. He's not a Green Lantern as far as I know, so what the hell? Well, it might be a pun on the term kilowatt, but uh -huh. kill is app, given he's been trained in past tensing people since he was three. I'll say, at age 14, he was strong enough to open a 64-ton door. Jeez, what kind of workout did his family put him through? Wow. Somehow, it gave him six skater skills, extendable claws, and rhythm echo, a technique that lets him fool people's senses with just his feet. More accurately, by manipulating the cadence of his footsteps, Killua can create an auditory illusion, capable of tricking even extrasensory abilities. Killua was a heck of a prodigy, but despite being able to effortlessly rip out hearts, his family still thought he wasn't cold-blooded enough. Fed up, he ran away. Not to the circus, but to the Hunter Association. An association of people who hunt, hunt stuff. People. There he tested himself in the Hunter's exam and inevitably had gone head over heels for his new friend, Gone. Get it? Oh God, Wiz, are you still taking those waste of time improv classes? Yes, and I think it's going pretty well. Mm-hmm. Killua's family didn't like him uh, making friends, so- Buzzing. They sat him down and then calmly and politely tortured him mercilessly as punishment. It was only thanks to Gon that Killua finally convinced his old man to let him go out on adventures with his buddies. But this change of heart was no act of compassion. Killua's father saw his freedom as just another step in molding him into a better killer. And in some ways, he was right. Through his adventures, Killua learned Nen, an invisible life force that- Yeah, yeah, it's key. It's always key. Actually, this one's a bit more complicated. You see, Nen is utilized through four main principles. 
10 for containing your aura while defending from physical and mental attacks, Zetsu for relieving fatigue and masking your presence, Ren for bolstering strength and influencing emotions, yeah, it's pretty standard so far, and Hatsu, the unique way in which one's Nen is expressed. This comes in many forms, but all fall into one of six types, which represent how proficient a Nen user is at certain techniques. So it's an RPG class system? More like a hybrid class system, because most users actually fall somewhere between two categories, giving them differing degrees of proficiency. Techniques from these Nen categories can even be further enhanced by adding rules to their use. Oh, then there are the advanced principles, which... Oh god, okay, I get it. But we haven't even talked about Killua's Hatsu yet. Killua is a transmuter enhancer, i.e. he specializes in transmuting his aura into different forms and enhancing the power of himself and others. He uses his aura to... He makes lightning! Uh, yes, in Killua's hand, lightning becomes a deadly weapon that he can fire down as a bolt, channel through his arms, or send through metal objects. Like his super alloy yo-yos, these bad boys weigh up to 50 kilograms. See, that's how you make a pun, Wiz. Packing enough force to shatter trees like I just shattered Wiz's confidence. <laughs> Add in Killua's lightning and he can electrify anyone who touches them. And this isn't some magic-y smagic -y lightning. His bolts have been identified as the real deal more than once. Meaning Killua is certainly as fast as actual lightning, especially when he uses it on himself to bust out God speed, a form that greatly amplifies his agility and power. So he stole from the flash from a flash villain. Yes, I am a god. The god of speed. Great. Letting him bypass his synapses to reflexively react to threats. For a regular folk, that much voltage would be too much. But thanks to Killua's training, he can shrug off over a million volts of electricity. He's also exceptionally crafty. In a Nen fight, every move matters, and strategy almost always triumphs, even against greater strength. Killua used these powers to battle world-renowned thieves, bomber mercenaries, and ants. That may not sound like much, but these no. chimera ants were brutal, murdering and eating people by the hundreds of thousands, then threatening billions. That reminds me of an old experiment gone horribly wrong. Killua understandably wanted to bail, but Gon pulled him back. Okay, like people doing experiments don't experiment on ants and for the love of god don't experiment on con you know i feel like everybody is like just experimented on the wrong things don't experiment on ants don't experiment on fucking cockroaches and don't experiment honestly don't even experiment on anything don't try to make a smarter animal than it already is because like uh, let's say you make a smarter bunny you'll get that King Bunny from Monty Python. Look! Ah! Jesus Christ! Again, much to his frustration. Killua wanted to be there for Gon emotionally, but could not comprehend why he was risking so much against the Chimera Ants, going as far as becoming a monster. In other words, Killua was crushing really hard, but didn't know what to do about Gon's simple-minded impulsiveness. It didn't end well for anyone. What? It wasn't all doom and gloom, though. Killua held his own against some of the Chimera Ants' best, surviving this forest-consuming blast from one of their captains. Which, judging by its size, was worth several Killua tons! And he Killua later tons. injured a top-ranking royal guard, Yuppie. Sure, he ran for the hills the moment Godspeed wore off, and isn't as strong as the weird horse man, but even just damaging someone who can make a crater like this is nothing to sniff at. But amidst all... Gong, 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 gong. All the fighting, Killua still could not get his family out of his mind. Literally. As in, his brother, Ilumi, put a needle in his head, forcing him to be controlled by self-preservation, ensuring he'd always run when victory isn't guaranteed. Wiz, you think you can call CBS for that? Thankfully, after some much-needed self-surgery and self-reflection, Killua removed it, overcoming his mental barrier and ready to risk his life for those he cherishes. Which he did when he finally got himself and his dear sister Aluka away from their demented family. He even brought Gon back from the brink of his creepy Nen coma. But despite how valuable Gon was as a friend, Killua realized his unhealthy dependence on him. 
So he decided to travel with and protect Aluka, finally realizing what he wants to do for the rest of his life. Oh god, the tearful romantic party! Still, if Gon or Aluka ever need help, Killua is sure to come running. Ready to Killua anyone dumb enough to mess with him or those he cares about. Okay. A sprawling metropolis filled with schools where espers train to master their supernatural abilities. Oh. Most of these youngins dream of rivaling the best espers, but only a few are hardworking and smart enough to do it. So it's My Hero Academia meets Final Fantasy VI. Got it. Among them being Tokiwadai Middle School's Level 5 Electro Master, Misaka Mikoto. Misaka. Level 5? So she's a Pokemon, but an anime girl. Each Esper's power and utility is ranked, with level 5 being the highest they can normally achieve. Oh. And after working up to that level, Misaka became unstoppable. She can magnetize herself to metal, electrically enhance her physique, sense her surroundings through an electromagnetic radar, and generate billions of volts. In addition, she can make iron sand from disparate particles in the air to form tornadoes, body decoys, Holy or a sword shit. that vibrates at rapid speeds for enhanced cutting power. Just what an anime girl needs a chainsaw man if she gets serious misaka can even make a friggin six million ton kaiju out of it with such tremendous power misaka put an end to many crimes Ur i guess godzilla would even have a have a problem with her fear among criminals admiration among her peers and lots of personal pride in her abilities there was nothing she couldn't overcome Nothing except the bane of all Sundares, a frizzy-haired, dumbass anime protagonist. Enter Kamijo Toma, a oh, level wow. zero nobody who Misaka could not harm, no matter how many times she tried. Oh, I hate you, but I secretly love you, and it'll work out in the end. Shut up! But she'd have more than a <laughs> dork like Toma to worry about. As amazing as Academy City is, it's more corrupt than New York real estate. Years ago, Misaka gave some shady sure scientists that? a sample of her DNA, being promised it'd help cure tons of fatal diseases. Instead, they made tens of thousands of clones of her, sending them all to be slaughtered one by one. Oh. Specifically against another level 5 and A tier edgelord named Accelerator. By farming all these clones, they hoped he would finally get enough EXP to become a mythic level 6. Is that seriously all it takes? How does this Esper stuff work? I'm glad you asked. Espers Holy represent shit. the scientific side of the world, a side I'm yeah, closely familiar with. Yeah, I was doing the same thing. All Espers possess an involuntary movement or AIM diffusion field that manifests their power, letting them consciously alter reality. Changing reality with your mind. Isn't that just magic? Au contraire, Boomstick, it's quite scientific. Look at Misaka's signature move, the Railgun. Many real-life railguns use a set of parallel conductors to generate Lorentz force. By envisioning imaginary rails between herself and her target, Misaka can create a similar yet greater effect, accelerating the speed and kinetic oh. force of a projectile, usually a coin, into a concussive bullet. It's beautiful. It's oh. science. How long are you going to be nerding out over this? Come on, this is like my one thing. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, thousands of dead clones. Traumatized by the endless slaughter, Misaka felt enormous guilt. You see it all the time with horrific experiments. Sure, buddy. She worked for days to end the clone project, but concluded it would have to end with her sacrifice. But Toma butted in, giving Misaka the support she needed in her darkest hour, while also punching out Albino Magneto with his Esper-proof fist. Misaka had shouldered her burden for so long that she forgot how to rely on others. This wake-up call from her newfound crush was exactly what she needed. But even with Accelerator decelerated, Misaka kept fighting Academy City's underbelly, all to protect her friends and free her sister clones she befriended. She dealt with a lot of trouble on the way, but had the power to do it. In her battle with a killer cyborg lady, Misaka conjured a city-spanning storm, which, by measuring the size of the cloud relative to the city, would require over 58 kilotons of energy to make. Kilotons. She's also fought other level 5s, not just Accelerator. She got into a middle school beef with a snobby telepath, fought this explosive weirdo, and dodged particle beams from an unhinged Karen. The electrons of which uh. can accelerate to high relativistic speeds. It's no shock! <laughs> Misaka's reactions are that fast, given her lightning has been stated to be light speed on five different occasions. More than just her powers, though, oh, no. Misaka's greatest asset is her intellect. It might not look it, but high-level espers constantly perform tons of nerd math just to make their powers work. 
and understanding other powers has been just as vital to Misaka's survival. Take her bout with the magic Valkyrie, Brunhild. Remember when Wiz said espers were the science side of the world? Well, these weirdos are packing the magic. A single mistake from Misaka could have meant death, but she still stalemated Brunhild. Now, Brunhild was still stronger and faster, but it is impressive Misaka was able to harm a saint, who are normally only deployed against foes capable of leveling mountains. One such foe, Hell, throws 100 kilometers of ocean. You'd think this means Misaka can take on all sorts of magical baddies. But alas, the power creep says otherwise. He's actually serious. When you're dealing with crazy magicians and magic gods, even a level 5 esper keep up. Misaka valued her abilities so highly that she struggled to maintain her self-esteem when they weren't enough. A shame Misaka cares so much about getting stronger when Toma appreciates her as a person first and foremost. While certainly a flaw, that ever-persistent hard-headedness will also keep Misaka around, no matter the stakes. So watch out, because this pint-sized 14-year-old is quite literally a walking railgun. Mm. Whoa. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! I feel like... Oh man, I feel like these guys are kind of evenly matched, but I feel that the crater thing is gonna play a part, because she said level mountains, and the guy was able to take a crater. So maybe the guy's gonna win, but I don't know. Oh, that's pretty good. Hey, that's right. mine. I've been looking for it all day. Give it here. You want it? <laughs> Come and get it. Coins, huh? I had a butler who used these. Oh. Oh, okay. Focus. It's a trick of sound, not sight. Gotcha! <laughs> He's good at hand to hand. Better keep my distance. She has stronger lightning. Gotta get in close. No, no problem. While Killua's assassin training made him a vicious threat, Misaka's abilities and know-how gave her the counter she needed in this mind-numbing battle of wits. Killua could survive Killua ton level blasts, and given some leeway, could scale to Yuppie, whose crater feat was worth 18 megatons of TNT. 
impressive, but the storm Misaka created beat anything Killua has done directly, and given similar scaling to Brunhild, who Misaka not only harmed but stalemated, her output could reach hundreds of megatons of TNT. Meaning, no matter which numbers are used, Misaka would always have the advantage in raw electrical power. No surprise there! Killua may have shrugged up a million volts of electricity, but Misaka can dish out and survive billions! Still, both characters have contended with and harmed stronger opponents, and the two power systems they work under have allowed weaker opponents to defeat stronger ones in the past. So, might alone wouldn't net either a win. Plus, Killua was way better at hand-to-hand -hand and physically stronger. Knowing his crafty assassin skills, things could have gone south for Misaka if she wasn't careful. But fortunately for the railgun, she was. Her fight with Brunhild shows she knows how to deal with tough, up-close threats while keeping her distance. And being able to dodge particle beams meant Misaka was more than fast enough to react to even Killua's lightning-quick speed. Add to that her bigger pool of powers, and she had plenty of ways to counter Rhythm Echo, since Killua was lightning, or just pin him in place long enough to pull off a railgun finisher. Killua was strong, but he wasn't gonna outmuscle six million tons of iron sand. Killua was a prodigy in all things Nen, Lightning, and killing, but Misika's varied electro powers, quick reflexes, and scientific brilliance let her cash in a win. But hey, at least she let Killua keep the change. She Killawood him! The winner is Misika Mikoto. Out. What? 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 Adding? Oh, Raku! Oh. Alright. July 3rd. Alright. That's gonna be an interesting fight. At least I know these the two of them, but I feel like Stitch will win because Stitch is kind of like Ooh. Wow. That's a that's gonna be a hard fought battle actually. Cause man, I don't think I've ever seen Stitch get harmed, but I think he has been in some of his other movies, but I've only seen like the first movie and some of the TV show. Uh, I mean, again, you guys let me know what you think about that in the next episode. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I knew nothing about these two characters. They were pretty cool. Pretty cool. But they seem like side characters, you know? But, uh, yeah, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So, please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content. And subscribe if you think I deserve it. And I'll see you on the next video.